Hi guys, welcome to another Creative Tap tutorial. Um, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create an animatic from a storyboard. I've already done one of these videos on doing it in Premiere, but I believe After Effects has got some things that Premiere doesn't. Like you can actually make a camera and realistically pull off the camera moves that you want to, okay? Um, so I'm very quickly just going to skim through exactly what we'll be creating, or exactly what I'll be showing you how I've created, I should say. So we've got a time code up here, we've got the shot numbering, got all this info. We've got the movements of the camera in here as well. Um, and we've got the camera flashes which I've animated. Um, this sort of pedestal and tilt of the camera. Okay, and yeah, there's not much left. This sort of tilt upwards looking at him going up. Okay, so yeah, that's basically it, right? So if I come into, first of all, if I come into After Effects, I've got at the beginning just a little five second title card just to kind of show what's going on. We've then got two compositions, animatic and text. I'm just quickly going to go into the text one. These all line up. So you've got two text layers. One is the shot number, scene 12, shot 4. And this stuff is just taken from the storyboard. So if we quickly have a look at the storyboard, I've noted down in here, this has got to be four seconds. It cuts cut, cut one to two. So shot one cuts to two, shot two cuts to three. But here, three, no, shot four, sorry, dissolves into five, with, so that's indicated by this X. Um, the red arrows are the camera moves, so the camera pushes in on shot two, it's locked off by here. The camera dollies to the left, while these characters walk to the left, that's the yellow arrow. Here, the camera pedestals down, but tilts up as they walk towards the camera. Shot four, arm comes in from the side. Shot, no, so that's five, isn't it? Shot five. <laughs> shot six... The camera pedestals down while it tilts up, and this guy moves up in the lift, okay? So if you're given a storyboard, you can kind of look at all this and basically do, move from there. So I'm just what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk you through. So if we come back to comp, go into animatic, I'm basically going to talk you through how I made mine. We've got, a, em, we've got an empty text layer on top. The reason I did that is if I delete it, our time code's gone. All you need to do to make your time code, uh, we go layer, new, and text so you've got an empty text layer i'm basically not even going to bother typing anything i'm just going to go into my effects and presets and in there i'm going to type time code or time co and it comes up drag onto there and basically you can then move this and scale it up like so so as we move through you can see a 16 frames in down there 16 by there nine seconds and eight frames nine seconds and eight frames so when we come back out that is why I've got this time code here. It starts, it actually starts at five seconds in, but it's obviously because I've got this five second title card at the beginning. So it's it basically shows at what moment in time you cut from one shot to another. I accidentally deleted it there, modern idiot. Um, yeah, so if you come through, your editor will know, right, bang on, four seconds, I've got a cut from one set shot to another. So that's just, you know, quite an easy thing. So back into animatic, that's our time code. Got our audio by here, I just got something off, off the internet for that, obviously royalty free. Layered shot one, if we just double click this one. All it is is I've got all my kind of layers in here imported from, I just saved the Photoshop file out from um, Photoshop, imported it but said not as footage, as composition, so I get all, all of these. My astronauts then, we've got our astronauts, our little sort of sketch drawings and then I've got the color laid on top. So what I did is I linked this to my astronauts. So when I keyframe the scale and the position of my astronauts, this linked color layer, which if you see on its own, it follows because it's, it's parented like that, okay? I should have named my layers better. I didn't. Oh well. <laughs> um, shot two. Um, if we come into this one, because something slightly different is going on. So I've linked as well the these color layers because you've got the reflection of the rocket in his visor by there and you've got the yellow in there and then you've got the sketch work so i've just animated the sketch work okay so i've animated the position and the scale so he just comes closer towards camera because i want him to be walking towards the camera okay and now these layers are now linked to it so they do it as well if we come back into the animatic you can also see that if i go hit you You've also got a scale on the shot as well. The reason I did these separate is I want the camera pushing into him, so everything needs to scale up together, but I also want him walking towards the camera so he should scale up slightly faster. And if you look at the edge of his helmet, you can see there is some parallax, like his 
if you scale them all up together, it would just get larger together. But you can see he's more in the foreground. So that's what, what I did there. Um, come to the next one. It's a bit more complicated. So if we go into layered shots, what are we? Three. Double click. Right. So what I've got in here, let's collapse everything down. I've got my, let's just delete that. I've got my ground and sky, which is the yellow and mustard color layer. Okay, let's zoom out because you can see when I select these different layers, um, if you know how the camera works, it's basically we're viewing from above. This is a bird's eye view. So if I hit position on this, you can see you've got X and Y. We've also got Z position. And if I move it, if you look by here, you can see it moves back and forth. So what I've done is I, because I want the camera moving left to right, I want to see some parallax, like these guys need to be moving faster than the other elements like the buildings in the background, okay, because they're closer to the camera. So I saved each out, the photographers, the astronauts, the buildings, the ground and the sky. Um, the ground and the sky are just shoved in the background because they'd be furthest away, and there's no detail in the ground, so you would kind of lay it down in 3D space, but there's no detail in it anyway. Next thing furthest away are the buildings. You can see as I click that, they're here. I just made these, basically made these layers 3D, went layer new camera to get my two to get my two views you just go click two views horizontal and then you can select this one and just go right I want a top view or I want a right view um, but I'll go back to top okay so I lay a new camera made all these layers 3d ignore the adjustment layer for now and then what I can do is I can get my position and chuck things in the background, but then you also have to scale it up. So I've scaled it to 386. The buildings, again, you can see they were chucked in the background. You can also, if you zoom in, um, you can also, there's a tiny little you can blue thing. And if, if you hover your mouse over it, there it is, hover your mouse over it, you can push it back like that if you want to. Um, but I literally just use the parameters. It's, um, it's a hell of a lot easier, to be honest. So push them in the background, I've got my astronauts then, I push them in the background, and then my photographers are right at front, okay? So let's turn this adjustment layer off. Because what I did then is I've just, all I've done is I've pushed these in the background. I haven't actually keyframe positioned anything apart from the camera, okay? So when I move, you can see when I move the camera, if I hit my camera and hit U, I've got some keyframes on there. So You've got loads in your transform, just the point of interest in the position. Let's tell you what, let's make a new camera to show you. So, layer, new, and camera. Click OK. And you can see now when I move, so let's come down, transform, point of interest and in position. I can now move this camera to the side. So we start over here. OK, something like that is fine. I am missing a bit of the edge there, so something like that. I'm going to keyframe, point of interest and position, come to the end, and I'm going to move my camera all the way to here. So what we've got is we've got everything moving. Now, these astronauts are, are actually moving independently because I wanted, as well as the camera moving from right to left, I wanted the astronauts also walk in as well, so they'll have their own movement. So what I've done with the astronauts, if it hit you, they've also got keyframe on the keyframe data on them. So if you look above by here, the two things moving are the astronauts, which is the astronaut layer, and the camera. Okay, everything else, even though the buildings are moving here, they're actually static. It's because the camera is animated. Okay, that's all I did with that one. What I did do is I know that these photographers are taking photos, so I made an adjustment layer below the photographers so it doesn't affect them, but above everything else, okay? So if you come in, in this adjustment layer, I just keyframe the exposure from 0 to 3 and back down to 0. So it's just got these brief flashes, okay? So as you come through, 0 to 3, back down to 0, and it affects everything below. So make sure you don't put it above the photographers because, you know, they wouldn't be lit up, they'd be silhouetted by it, really. So yeah, that's that one. <clears throat> then shot four, it's quite similar again, it's a camera setup. If we look back at this animatic, we know the camera needs to go down but also tilt up. So the only thing different by here was I made these layers 3D again. So you've got ground and sky. If we look, I've just shoved that one in the background. So if I click ground and sky, it's all the way in the background and I've had to scale it up to like 388. 
the crowd the same i push that in the background and then the astronauts walk in i want them walking towards the camera so what i did is if we go i've animated the position across these three seconds okay so they basically they move this pink bit's the camera i've animated the position so they move further towards the camera to look as if they were walking towards the camera with the camera itself, we know that we want the camera to move down, so I've keyframed the. Don't know why I've got keyframes, but yeah, I've keyframed the point of interest and the position. So if we look, the camera moves down. Tell you what, I'll create this one again as well. But it also I've keyframed the X rotation, so it ever so slightly. Let's have a quick look. You can see it ever so slightly. It's level there, and by the time we get to here, it's tilted up ever so slightly, you can see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually create that again for you. So delete, layer, new, camera, 50 mils fine, click OK. And yeah, so this is what we've got. So if I come to the beginning, these guys move towards camera. So I'm happy with this start, so I'm going to keyframe point of interest, position, and X rotation. I'm going to, I know the shot's three seconds long, so I'm going to come to the end, like so. I'm going to, I can do it in here, or I can do it with these values, but I prefer to move it in here. I can move this camera down. As I'm doing this, you can see the point of interest and the position there, the numbers there are changing. So if I come down like this, there you go, yeah, so the biggish camera move, something like that. And also this X rotation, what I want to do, maybe bring it down a touch more. Something like that. Um, this X rotation, if I go and keyframe this up, so we're kind of we're looking up at them, you can see the camera now tilts. Don't want to do it too much, um, but something like that. And now we can afford to further bring the camera down. Okay, so what we've got is we've got our camera move. It moves down and it also it tilts up slightly. Okay, that's all I did for that one. Final one then is literally this hand just moves in and out. I've literally just keyframed one layer there. Pretty simple with that. Um, shot six, very similar, same similar setup again. Let's just go to view and turn these guides off. So we've got this in the background, this the sky in the background, the lift module in the background, the lift astronaut, I've animated him traveling up. And I've done the same again where I've got, if we zoom into the camera, I've done the same as last time. It starts up the top and it's not tilted, it moves down, but then it's also tilted up. Okay, and that's all I've done to create this animatic. So if we come in, we've got all our shots here, the time code on top, the audio, I've also made the text, put them together, got a title card, voila you have got everything in there it's really important to include your time code and some directions as well some like illustrations of what's going on the shot numbers um so yeah i've done it in premiere if you prefer to work in premiere check that video out because i did also um it's harder to add i find it more i find it more difficult to add transitions in after effects which is why i use premiere sometimes so to add the transitions in here what i did is literally i overlapped some of the layers and the one on top, I just keyframe the opacity to kind of come out, okay? So this is better for, like, nailing the camera angles than Premiere is, but I do feel Premiere is a lot easier when it comes to actually adding transitions. So I hope that kind of um, summarised it up for you. Have a watch of them both to see which is your best approach. Um, but yeah, cheers for that, and I shall see you in another tutorial. <laughs>